It's our first masterclass here at the 27 Tradewise Gibraltar, 2017 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. Um, you're here two years ago. It's Veselin Topalov, who's been a uh, former well, FIDE World Champion 2005 and one of the absolute top chess players in the world for the last 20 years, Veselin, if not longer than that. Okay. Welcome um, back to Gibraltar. Your second visit? Yeah, second time. Yeah, how are you feeling? How's it feel to be back? I'm really enjoying. You really having a good time? Of yeah. course. Great. Well, um, you have prepared something special, I think, for us today. Oh uh, yeah, I, I prepared a lecture about the mistakes we, we do, we make uh, when we take some moves for granted. And it usually happens with during the calculations, but it could be on, mo on our first moves of the line we calculate, or sometimes it can be much deeper. So, uh, okay, I'll start with uh, one very famous position, uh, one very famous game that was played in uh, 1984 in the first match between Kasparov and Karpov. And of course, okay, it's not really like uh, a big thing, but uh, for example, in this position, uh, I don't know how to get to, uh, I click. Excuse me. Oops, ah, so, so, sorry. Coming soon. Sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, it's this famous game between Karpov and Kasparov in their first match. So uh, it was not a big mistake what Kasparov did, but of course he's a bit worse, um, and he should just wait. So it's a question if uh, um, White is winning or not, but of course he should have waited. And I think he took for granted that uh, after H, uh, GH, of course, Karpov would immediately take back. And then, let's say, uh, King goes to F4, but, but if it's, uh, for example, if the knight goes to F4, then bishop should, s should go to F7 and to protect both pawns on D5 and H5. Mm -hmm. If the knight goes to C5, then, of course, the black has to, to stay on to with their bishop to c8 and <coughs> of course wait. But of course what Kasparov didn't expect was the move knight g2. Again, he took for granted that uh, white would take uh, the pawn, but I don't know if knight g2 is stronger than, uh, than the move uh, gh, but I think the, the very shock of not considering that move, uh, it was a big blow for him and eventually he couldn't defend uh, uh, this position. So, um, uh, so well as we see, it happens to everyone. And uh, the, the next uh, position I want to show is uh, um, um, uh, the, the, uh, the the next one. Um, So the next position, uh, like around uh, 12 years ago, it happened to him as well. And uh, I'm showing a, a game that I don't think it's like the best example, but I want to show it because uh, I was present and it was a very important uh, final of the um, uh, rapid event in Geneva in 1996. And then th this was the decisive, uh, the decisive. Um, uh, Blitz game. You were playing in this event? I was it? there. Uh, yeah, I was knocked out by Kasparov, I think. And then the final was Kasparov against Anand. And it was very strange that f the first game of the 25-minute uh, uh, final was won with Black against with Kasparov. But then the second one, he got a very easy position with White and he only needed a draw, but he pushed uh, like... I think he kind of relaxed and then eventually he lost. I think he made a mistake. And then they reached um, this f decisive um, blitz game when uh, Kasparov was completely dominating. We had uh, more time and two pawns up. So, um, so we, f we reached this position when, uh, well, his clear advantage, you know, and uh, he could just take with the knight and then he, he would immediately, he would probably win 
the final. Mm -hmm. and then he can also play a five, a very strong move, and uh, well, many or just to castle. But again, he took, and of course he he believed that uh, right. immediately um, queen takes is like forced. But th the th the thing is that after queen g4, he's already lost. In one move. Exactly. Yeah. But of course, yeah. Again, it was a blitz game, so um, it was a blitz game. So uh, blitz or rapid? That's a blitz. No, it, that was a blitz, it's game, a blitz game, and yeah. it's easy to miss that move. And then uh, f it just completely turned, um, and he f eventually lost that game and also lost the final. The final. So Black actually has three pieces under attack now. It's quite amusing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then of course he had to castle, but okay, he's already a queen queen down and. Uh, mm lost position and uh, I think Vichy never let him uh, escape mm -hmm. so uh, <coughs> two mistakes from Gary yeah mm. so uh, the the next position I want to say show is uh, uh, the this position it's just some theoretical uh, position that uh, it th there's be there's been already some games mm. Um, that, for example, here, um, this is a theoretical position when obviously white can take on d8 and uh, black takes on d1, white takes on c7, and black takes on b2. But also, there is this, this move, which is very funny. Oh, this is an amazing it's a move. It's famous, yeah, that you just. So, and of course, it's very, very easy to, you know, to to miss uh, s this kind of moves. I just show it because I really like it. You know, it's one of the moves I, I will always remember, especially the first time I saw it, it looked to me amazing. So that's- How is uh, it possible to find such move without using a computer? Uh, or, you know I mean? Well, that's been played in the year 2000, so I don't think it was really, well, but uh, I, d I mean, uh, Bishop D8 was played. Hmm. And uh, there, there's been already several games with the move Queen F3 as well. Yes, uh, but I knew it like more than 10 years ago. Uh, but it, okay, of course it's not the, o the end because again, uh, we have the same stuff now that you can take the Queen, you can take the bishop, but of course the move is the strong move, <laughs> the, the best move is queen c8. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <it's just laughs> and of course now white has to take and, nice. uh, and then I think d5 and some compensation. Mm. Um, so uh, this is the second position I, I like to, to show. Um, and then of course uh, my uh, I, uh, I'm starting with my experience. Uh, last year I played um, uh, in St. Louis, <coughs> uh, the Sigfield Cup, mm. and uh, the tournament was going great for me. So, uh, but in the first five games, uh, I had absolutely similar situations. So, if you look here, um, so my opponent uh, took and uh, took on d4. So, of course, I was considering e5, which is to win a piece, mm. and eventually it's stronger than what I did. Uh, but it was, you know, a bit it was a bit of uh, jet lag. It was a bit that the uh, first round I wanted to be solid, and I also considered this move was also good enough. And in my calculations uh, here, uh, after knight e4, my original idea was to take, and then after knight takes uh, b4, then uh, rook takes e4, and I thought that then queen e2, and it was a very good pressure for white. But again. If I take, black is not forced to take because he has knight f2. <laughs> yes. So uh, already we had this problem. Um, uh, and of course, yeah, after, after ed, of course, I'm not forced to take e5. But what uh, what I happens I mean after e5, Eslin? What I happen? think after e5, white is a bit better. But it's quite complicated. Uh, I think take and I think uh, knight b3. So white wins a piece. Mm. and. Uh, I think objectively white is, uh, has a better position, but I uh, uh, don't remember the real, but again, uh, it looked to me uh, both moves were okay, uh, and simply that the move CD was clearer, you know, it was easier to play for white, mm. uh, but again, uh, my, my mistake was that in this position, I, my original was used to take, and I thought it was forced to take on B4, and then I realized that knight F2 was strong. So, um, 
that was in the first round. Eventually, uh, of course, I, I knew that I could take, and it was even some slow, small advantage after rook c1, and uh, it was probably not much, but uh, I think uh, my opponent, uh, he made some uh, mistake in the calculation, and uh, he just blundered a piece. Uh, so that was the first... Uh, uh, oops, the fir oops. Mm, that was the first round. So we already had this uh, situation with when we, we, we have uh, some moves that we consider they are forced. Uh, and then the second round, I was playing Fabiano. So uh, the, way the game went pretty very good for, for me. And uh, I think here uh, uh, Fabiano played the move uh, bishop a2, which was a mistake. So I and he missed that here I have this very strong move, mm -hmm. and and now he found uh, the best uh, uh, the the best um, way to play because position is better for black. He had to sacrifice his queen, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and but okay. Of course, he has three pieces and some fortresses, mm. and um, you know. It look it's not clear. So of course here I made the natural move, queen d4. But after bishop f3, white is still better. But of course now it's uh, not so easy. And finally it was a draw. But my mistake was that okay, obviously queen d4 can be a bad move. That's what I thought. And I actually saw the move rook e8, mm. uh, which was actually much much stronger because now um, we exchange the rooks and then somehow black I white is not able to uh, prevent the, the penetration of black queen. Like, for example, uh, if he takes and king f1, then I just go queen e4. And I didn't re I, I saw it was good, but I didn't realize that, in fact, it looks completely winning for, for black. Mm. So the computer was showing, like, almost, uh, almost the a win. The b2 pawn is very weak, Yeah, because it? I'm penetrating. So again, uh, natural taking uh, looks like a forced move <coughs> and mm. it, can, it is not a bad move but of course again it's not uh, it's not the best move. Do you uh, remember is that did you play that move very quickly? No 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 because I I, I think my Fabiano he was also in a time trouble but and I said okay come on uh, rook e8 uh, it just couldn't believe queen d4 was a bad move mm. and he, indeed mm. it is not a bad move but it's simply not uh, it's missing the win because right. Uh, for example, if after this move, uh, white can go rook e3, but again, I think uh, it's more or less the same, somehow, uh, same problem. Somehow I'm <laughs> penetrating to e4 and then again to b1, mm. and uh, black is not able to... Or maybe, not, maybe, maybe in this position, queen e7 is actually stronger, and after <coughs> knight, queen, e, queen e7 is stronger, instead of... Uh, Where was the queen? Here, yeah. uh, so I'm so if black if white uh, goes like this, then I have b4, b3, or maybe okay. just go like this and queen d3. Mm. So okay, of course it's uh, with computer it's easy to to realize black is winning, but uh, over the board it uh, we don't know it. So that's the reason I took. So mm, again, it was not a mistake. It was a very natural move, but it was not the best. So I missed the win. So a uh, very human move, queen takes d4. Yeah, of course. But that's the typical move that we take without big thing, mm. wi without thinking. We take and then, okay, you just. It, uh, that's what I couldn't believe. It, it's, it cannot be a bad. Mo it ca it can be a bad move, but it's again, it's missing the, um, the win. Yeah. So my next move, uh, my next. Uh, uh, game was uh, on the, the, the day after. Um, I played um, against Vachier. So I prepared um, some line, which a very forced line. It's a very, uh, very uh, popular variation. And I thought that wi white was pressing a bit. And um, so, okay, it's, you know, uh, this typical. Uh, line when uh, <coughs> there are already hundreds of games and mm. so I thought this was uh, a bit disturb 
annoying for Black uh, because Vashir, he already played against Giri in the first round and he was worse. So I had some small idea. So that was more or less the position where uh, I think Grishchuk <coughs> agreed to draw with Anand. Anand agree and Grishchuk, they agreed to draw. But I, I thought it could be a bit better, especially if White is able to put his pawn on c4 and then mm -hmm. uh, I had some um, let's say small ideas, but uh, of course, so he played queen h3, and now um, that was not the move that computer liked because I, I can just go to a3, you know, which uh, d of course but white white uh, wants to take on black, black wants to take on, on, e4. on e4. So right. of course I have to pr I have to protect, and after long think, it showed uh, how bad my uh, form was. I played rook d3 after like 10, 15 minutes thing. And of course, I completely missed that mm. uh, losing a piece. But I was lucky that uh, after this, the ending is um, closer to a draw than, um, than, a loss. than, than f winning for black. So eventually, I could push my pawns on b4. And white has some activity. And it was a draw. But again, it's very funny that uh, after rook d3, apparently, uh, the winning move is not rook c2, but uh, first d5. Wow. And uh, after white takes, only then rook c2. Just of explain course, explain the difference, please. Uh, the difference is that uh, in this position, uh, let's say here, um, black goes like this. Hmm. Of course, it's very difficult <laughs> to <laughs> keeping the pen. Of course, it's very difficult to to see it. But uh, again, the natural move, which w I, I would say, I would say uh, nine out of ten players, maybe ninety five out of hundred would take on c two uh, because it's just a clear pawn. Of course, but uh, it's not the best move. Uh, yeah. Taking and the, the forced and the natural th is not. Not the best. So D and uh, Vashir, he actually said he considered move D5. But again, it probably happened to him what happened to me against uh, Caruana. That uh, mm. I mean, okay, you just it's difficult to resist uh, winning a pawn, a clear pawn. Yes. You know, and uh, well, it's he took a practical decision, but uh, it was just not the the best. As Black, you would have played Rook takes C2 probably as well. Of course. Well, I, right? I, again, maybe n out of hundred players, maybe ninety five would. Yeah. Take strong or maybe s of course, <coughs> yeah. mm. of course. Yeah. Uh, so my so that was uh, in the third round and next round I was playing Fab uh, Hikaru. Um, All of these players are here, Vasilin, this year. Uh, yes. Yeah, Maxime, yes. Fabiano, Hikaru. Yes. In fact, did you see the? You might have seen it. We did um, a little compilation video asking some of you, some of our top players like yourself, a few questions. Tanya, I think, was asking the questions. And one of the questions was, who would you most like to play here? And um, I think it was Fabiano who said he'd most like to play you because when you play each other, your games always become very interesting Could and be, yeah. kind of uh, crazy games. No, I actually, uh, what she was your asked answer? me yeah. who, who, who d I, I would like to beat. And I said I would uh, like to, to, to beat Hikaru because he's uh, winning against me um, all the time, right. so I would, I would <laughs> like a red. But it doesn't. <laughs> no, but it doesn't mean I want to play him. But uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, means, it means that uh, if yeah. I if I play, yeah. I would like to. I would be pleased to win. But yeah. So, so in the fourth round against um, Hikaru, we had a very interesting game. I had this queen sacrifice. Uh, I think he didn't really uh, consider it probably because it looked to me very natural uh, because it's a new move that uh, ed was played and then after it's also probably good bishop e6 rook mm. e8 knight e4 but of course it looked to me very good to take and then of course white has to uh, take the queen and then um he made some mistakes so uh he so he was somehow in trouble already and then uh b4 and bc um so i played here Knight d6. So uh, again, I thought that, uh, for example, uh, it cannot be a bad move. Looks very natural. It looks very so natural. 
And if he takes, then my idea was, uh, I don't remember which rook I was planning to take, I think probably this one. And then he has to stop, uh, he, he has a problem to stop, uh, uh, because first he has to play something like g3, and then I thought here, and then bishop d5, bishop d4, knight d5, or, and rook b8, rook b2. I thought it was very good advantage for black. Mm. And, uh, uh, and again, uh, I, I, I made a natural move, considering that he's forced to take. Looks like it. But in mm. fact, he's, he was not forced. He played here, and then he could somehow uh, develop. He could uh, play g3 and d uh, d uh, castle. Mm. But again, what I missed was that in this position, um, in, this, in this very position, uh, taking is not good. No. Uh, no. I had a much stronger move, bishop d4. And it looks now black has a very, very big advantage. Hmm. So again, taking is, was not good. Uh, like the, I, I mean, here I made two mistakes. First I thought, uh, first I didn't find the best move, bishop d4. And then of course I considered the automatical chain. Um, exchange. Exchange. Right. Which was also a mistake. Was this queen sacrifice, Veselin? Just quickly go back to when you played knight takes f. Was this something you prepared at home? No, I, uh, it's not that I prepared, but uh, of course it's very typical. Uh, I, I played uh, a game against uh, Levon, and uh, it was very similar that he mm, he also uh, played with. He took with the knight, and I could I could have taken the queen, but uh, then it would be still very dangerous. Hmm. So I it already happened, but I was wide then. Right. Uh, so, um, but after e4, was he kind of expecting knight b4? Let me, let or what me was see. he expecting? Uh, I think that the against, against uh, Levon, what we played was like this, like this here, c5 here. He played knight c6. I took knight d5. Mm. And now, of course, it's the same, right. si similar. Well, so I could go uh, e4 and take. Uh, so he was prepared so to. So I already yes. had this uh, right. idea. Uh, but in you mind. didn't play e4. No, didn't I did. Play I played e3, and then after queen a5, it was more or less a draw. Uh, mm. We kind of exchanged. Uh, but so I knew uh, this idea of uh, queen sack. Mm. But uh, the very fact that uh, he thought for so long, I think. Uh, showed that he didn't really like the, the idea and he, m he was not ready for that. <coughs> but again, um, so again, I hear the natural taking was um, a mistake. I mean, I, I made a double mistake. First I, I took and then I, bec because I consider he would take on c8, uh, we, we, like, and so, so, okay, so why is bishop d4 such a strong move? Because then um, I think uh, the, the, the c file is opened. Mm. So he's, I mean, uh, after the move bc, somehow he's able to win some couple of tempies. So they play g3 and bishop e2, castle, and his knight is very well placed. Yes. But if I play bishop d4, my next move is uh, taking on c5, and then I have also bishop b4 check mm. as an idea. So black is in a big, big trouble. Uh, white is in a big trouble already. Uh, so that was um, in the fourth, uh, fourth round. And then <coughs> finally, I think I kind of uh, mm, realized my mistake because uh, that, you know, the moves we take for granted are not forced. Right. Um, and in my fifth round, uh, game against um, uh, Dinkliren. Uh, I was better after the opening, but of course he defended, and then we reached, uh, let's say, this kind of uh, uh, ending after rook b6, which I, I didn't know how to consider w was it winning or, or not. Uh, but of course, it's not easy to defend. So I think, uh, for example, here it's difficult to say if it's. Uh, if it's winning or not. But I think he started to, uh, he allowed me to create some mating threats. Uh, so I could somehow enter uh, and start to, to, to threaten his, in, in his time trouble, right. his king. 
And finally... It looks uh, very unpleasant for black. Yeah, but again, here, the thing is that uh, we repeat it, and it was a mistake, because uh, in this position, uh, what I, I think, check here, check here. And uh, what I simply couldn't immediately realize was in this position when I was calculating. Of course, I, I saw check here because, I, okay, it makes no sense to go to F5 because I have check on F8. Right. What I didn't realize was that in this position, uh, you know, that uh, immediately, uh, when that of course this was, uh, I thought it was a draw because mm. uh, black checks and then here. But again, uh, it took me quite a lot of time to realize that in this position I don't have to take. Ah. So if I go king h2, <laughs> he he's Fantastic. not able to, you know, black is not able to, to stop the move king g3 with the idea h4. And only when I realized, <laughs> only when, <laughs> only when yeah. I realized, but of course, again... Uh, it's very hard to see that somehow. Yeah, but it took me, it was uh, the second time to control, control so uh, <coughs> after move 60, so it's, we were both tired, but finally I could realize it, and then he also saw it. Uh, so, but because in this position, uh, apparently king f7 was a draw. Really? <coughs> yeah. So we both make uh, made this mistake, but I think he also didn't see that uh, uh, that King H2 was winning. Hmm. So uh, he played this move uh, instead of uh, Bishop H2 in this position after after Rook F8. Instead of this move, he played Rook B2, and then after and Rook C7. And g3, he, he can stop the mate. Right. I mean, uh, I mean uh, knight g2, bishop g2 is simply knight g2 and, uh, sure. and uh, rook c5 mate. Yeah. So I finally learned my le <laughs> <laughs> from my <laughs> mistakes. And uh, as, as an end, I would like to show another position because I, I think it's amazing. It I reached uh, uh, somehow to it. It's very hard <laughs> to train oneself, Vesselin, for to find this kind of moves. Oh yeah, because it's... It? Uh, I mean, it's how do you train for that? Uh, well, it's simply, you have to always know that, uh, especially now, uh, with computers, I think computers, they, uh, they teach us to look at every single move sometimes. It's mm. We don't have to, th to believe that there are so many, that the all everything is forced. Right. <laughs> so, so this is the position I wanted to show. Uh, the thing is that um, I believe that it's one of the very, very rare positions where humans are better than computers. So I gave this position to several strong grandmasters like Paco Vallejo, Salgado, and uh, and of course they find they find the the. Um, the best move much quicker than the computers. Really? So mm. yeah, and finally, uh, just before this tournament, I, my laptop it took it uh, around half an hour to f to find the best move, mm. and uh, it it's uh, uh, it takes around uh, twenty seconds to all of these grandmasters to realize mm. that uh, this is winning, because after knight takes f five, knight d five, and then somehow. Uh, for example, this is very funny. This line is winning uh, with the simple move c3. So mm. white wants to play d f bishop d4. So uh, for example, uh, h6. So bishop d4 is queen g5. But of course, you stop it. <laughs> and uh, again, the idea is bishop d4. So black has to go c5, for example. And of course, now bishop f4 is very strong. But also, I like this line. Uh, for example, like this, check, <coughs> and now h5. Mm. And then you collect mm. <laughs> the... <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> so again, I, I would like everyone to try on his computer, but I believe <laughs> that uh, it really takes... Because from uh, exchange up, I'm not sure if black 
if y plays differently. I'm not sure if um, um, it's winning because if the black uh, if black puts his knight on f5 and then play b6 or bishop b7 or d6 bishop d7, it's mm -hmm. really really hard to break. Black has a very strong. Uh, <laughs> Blo blockade. Where did this position come from? Was it from one of your games uh, or yeah, some yes. Just preparation? Or and in fact, the funny thing was that I found it blindfold. I mean, blindfold. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then he, he and then it turned out it was true. Uh, but again, I of course, mm, if you put most of the grandmaster, they would find it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe. Mm -hmm. But computers, it really takes uh, even the strongest engines now. It takes them around half an hour. Right. Uh, almost depth 40, maybe. Mm -hmm. So uh, so again, it's like I believe that computers are stronger in 99% of the positions. Or maybe even if in 19 out of 1,000 positions, maybe in 900, um, 990, maybe they, they, they're stronger. But this right. special position, I think humans are better. Still. Yeah, so, so there's mm. still hope. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, in this position, I think computer likes to take on g6 because it doubles the pawns. Right, yes. But then, but then black goes to f5, and then once the, the bishop goes to b7 or d7, it's really, really hard to break because mm. uh, uh, it has very good white squares for, uh, very good white square for, for his pieces. Right, so yes. you have to, but of course, human realized that you know it's difficult to jump for exchange up to two pawns down for a computer to In realize fact, that yes. it is stronger yeah, right. to play with two pawns down rather than with uh, an exchange up. Mm. So how does it feel? I mean, all players have this of all strengths now that everyone uses computers all the time to prepare and to you know when you s you think you've played a great game, you go home, you put it on the computer, and you see it was full of mistakes on both sides, no? Or, or uh, mistakes? I mean, you know. Well, of course, it's uh, of course uh, there are several effects that uh, I think that the respect, uh, especially the chess fans had for uh, the world champions or the big grandmasters, it's been it's lost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you mean of the past or particularly? Uh, you mean now, like now, no, because no. Uh, when we spent uh, half an hour or ten minutes over a move, and e eventually the computer shows it in one second. Mm. Obviously, uh, we can't call ourselves geniuses. <laughs> but <laughs> but then, uh, of course, uh, and and again, the I think the general level really has improved really really a lot. Like yeah. again, if we see today's round. We had uh, on the top boards um, games between uh, uh, players of uh, around 300 points difference, yeah. and uh, it was not as easy as it was before. Many draws on the top well, board. Well, but it, uh, yeah. it's normal because the first 10, 15 moves are uh, played the same way by 20, 300 player, er, and the, the world champion plays more or less the same moves as mm. the, the first uh, 15 moves. You can't right. really win so easy. Yeah. Have you noticed a difference in your own career from, for example, 10 years ago when you played 2500s or...? Uh, I would say when I was playing open, especially uh, 20, 25 years ago, yeah. or more than 20 years ago mm. here in Spain, it was really easy to, to win many games. And uh, I, I would say the difference was much bigger than now. Right. Who would like to ask uh, Veselin a question from our audience? on um, any of the positions that he's been discussing and making mistakes or something else about his career? Anyone? Neil? In the back, sir. Vaseline? Just, just talk. It's a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Uh, two questions to you. One is, uh, some of your recent interviews you had said the statement that uh, uh, I realized that there are more important things in life than chess and uh, my philosophy towards chess is a little bit changed and so on. Uh, maybe I'm not quoting the right words, correct, exact words. Uh, you have always been a very dynamic player, one of the most dynamic players in the history of chess. With this change in your personal philosophy, is it possible to play the still the same kind of brand of chess that you always played all these years? 
Well, I guess it's still possible, but just the results are not the same. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think I'm going to change my style because I still like to have interesting games. But uh, obviously, once you train less and less, uh, the results sooner or later uh, will go down. And I actually, I even when I won in 2015 in Stavanger, I had showed good results. And uh, even then, I said that somehow my brain uh, was not working uh, as, as good as before. And, uh, and uh, especially sometimes the memory is uh, collapsing. I can't really uh, uh, remember all these lines because the, the information becomes more and more. So mm -hmm. in this respect, uh, the young players, obviously, they do have a big advantage compared to us. Um, because I don't think uh, experience can compensate the uh, the calculation. I believe that in 80-90% of the games are decided by uh, tactical blows and tacti tactical mistakes. So it's logical that young players cal we, who calculate better, they will have the better results. Mm. And one thing about your technique, uh, you are known in the history of chess to be one of the uh, most, uh, uh, let's say, prolific exchange sacrifice players. Uh, any reason for that? Uh, no, not I. No, not really. No, not really. It just it just happened. I I don't have an explanation because they have the, the there's been this uh, famous uh, position from Petrosian who played rook e7 to e6. Uh, but I again I don't uh, have this explanation. It just happened, you know. Question. So, uh, any particular player who influenced you the most when you were growing up? Well, you know, my first coach, he was a big fan of Fisher. So, uh, in the chess club, we were teaching, uh, he was teaching us the King's Indian and the Nidorf. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was what Fisher was playing. And still, I, I mean, I'm uh, all my life a Nidorf player. And King's Indian, I was playing when I was younger. Uh, so Fischer, Kasparov, obviously, because uh, during their first match, uh, I was eight. Uh, I was nine in uh, 84. So I, obviously, I grew up with the matches between Kasparov and Karpov. And at the beginning, I was rooting for Karpov. For some reason, I don't understand, because my style is completely, uh, uh, it's much more similar to Kasparov's style. but. For some reason, I just liked his name. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Karpo, and not Kasparov. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, and, but again, yeah, it's when you're young, when I was nine, uh, you, you, th you do things you don't really understand why. So, uh, Tell us a bit, Veselin, I'm going to ask some other questions as well, about um, Sylvia. Now, Sylvia Denilov, who's, of course, your manager, great friend. He's been your coach and, and a companion on your journey since you were young, very young boy, I think. Fairly young, no? Just um, a little bit about that, tell us. Sylvia was, was going to be here, he was going to play, I see, this year. He was in the list. But he's uh, had to pull out, unfortunately, so we'd not be seeing him this year. Uh, I think we are working since I was 16. Or no, I was 16. Yeah. Okay, Sylvia Denilov. So, so how has that um, worked out? No, at the beginning he was also coach, you know, and now he's mainly almost... Uh, just giving general advices and uh, managing, mm. but uh, um, we started. W it was very funny because uh, at the end of '91, because I was not born in in Sofia, in the capital of Bulgaria, and uh, I accidentally I saw him and I said I heard that he had some connections to organizing in Spain, and I told him, okay, why don't you kind of marry uh, manage some. Uh, tournaments for me, and then I left and I forgot. You know, just I didn't think that was serious. Mm. And then he just called, and we had several tournaments. And uh, the it's very very lucky that the first one uh, I I, play I took second place, and then uh, something happened in a, a very strong tournament in Gran Canaria in 1991. Someone dropped, and then th I took his place, and then Korchnoi was there. And I could make this immediately the second uh, Grandmaster norm. Uh, 
So I shared the first place with Korchnoi and um, I think uh, Franco. Uh, so I was very lucky that uh, mm, to, to, to immediately have this uh, success and then to be a grandmaster at 17 was a very good age. Now, of course, I think uh, the <laughs> if you're <laughs> at 15, it's already late. <laughs> but um, but 17 was a good a good age for to be a grandmaster then. And yeah, and since then, of course, we had uh, Spain was a great country for chess. There were many many opens, and that's what I needed. Uh, I I and I <coughs> won many opens, and then I also started to get invitations for close tournaments. So I in one year, I could. Uh, improve uh, my rating and uh, from I would say uh, <coughs> at the beginning of at the beginning of 1993 I was already in top 20 somehow but it was uh, you know good good times mm. Mm. Good more questions anyone back Andrew you've been talking about computers. Um, do you think the world order, the ranking order of players would be any different if there wasn't any computers? Because uh, some people perhaps rely on preparation uh, perhaps more than others? Definitely. I don't think uh, it affects. I, I would pr probably say that uh, Magnus would still be number one. Uh, because he, especially if you look at his games, he just doesn't like this uh, long uh, forced uh, opening lines. And uh, I would say computers, they help the weaker players, uh, you know, to, to start a game in a normal position. <coughs> of course, mm. then you can still lose, but uh, you, it will not be a complete disaster at uh, the very beginning. Mm. So, uh, but uh, top 10, I, d I, I don't really know. It's, I it's an interesting question. Maybe. You ch we should just look at the rapid rating, rating list and then we realize uh, maybe who, who mm. would have the better results with, without computers. Do you have a favorite game of your own, Vesson, if you were writing a book of your best uh, games? Have you done that? Is there a book of your best I games? I do have, um, no, not really planning yet. No. Uh, <coughs> just lazy. Uh, because <laughs> the thing is, uh, if, I, if I may write a book, uh, it will take several months. And uh, just for the moment, I don't plan. Mm. Uh, I, I, ha I think I have three uh, <coughs> evergreen games. Uh, uh, th I think uh, in 1995, 1996, and also like may maybe four. Uh, obviously, the, the one with Kramnik in um, in Cor in Ka Corus when I took this Knight of Seven. I think it was because mm. the everybody... In the Botvinnik Moran, no? Yes, yeah. because everybody is saying that uh, Kasparov, uh, that, that game of Kasparov against me, yes. uh, which was also great. But compared, mm. compared to that game, okay, the, the game he beat me, it was really amazing game, but it didn't have a very big theoretical value. But uh, that game, uh, Knight of Seven, okay, obviously it's uh, one... Uh, it's a it's a try for one or two mm. games, but uh, it it has a theoretical value. And mm. Whereas when Kasparov beat me, it was <coughs> some pilch, and I was completely fine. Yes. And then the 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 next game I would say was really uh, one of my best. It was I think they they were all uh, uh, voted best of the year um, <coughs> against Vichy in Sofia. I think t year two thousand five. Again, mm. I had this knight f seven. It was. Uh, I think in, in Sofia Amtel Masters 2005, also mm. Queen's Indian, and then against Levon uh, in Vaik in 2006. I think I had this double exchange uh, sacrifice, which ru all, all and both uh, sacrifices were made on the same square on E4. Mm. I think, uh, and all these three games, I think they were voted the best game of the year, and also against Vallejo in 2014 during the Olympiad. I think first round for me. I don't know if it was the first round of the Olympiad or my first game in the Olympiad. Mm. Also, I think I sucked uh, a queen. Uh, like so these are my four favorite games. Mm. Question? Yes? I'll ask one. 
Sure. Uh, well, Veslin, as a Pierce player myself, the game in 99 did hurt me a lot, so it had some theoretical value to me, but that's not my question. Um, the continued rise of open events, do you see this as being a trend, or do you see uh, <coughs> the number of open events, the strong open events, just staying where they are, the four or five that exist today? Uh, I I'm not sure it will change, actually. I think that... Uh, in fact, I, right now, I, I actually prefer to play the kind of, uh, the, this kind of events because uh, our problem is we always play the same guys and at some point it becomes a bit boring and, uh, b and uh, it becomes, to becomes too much predictable. The, the routine, you already know more or less the opening because w sometimes when we were playing uh, several tournaments in a row, uh, just uh, even sometimes white and black uh, strong players play the same openings. And here you see new faces. So the, I really prefer, uh, right now I really prefer the, this kind of uh, opens and s s strong opens, but with new faces. Mm. And Nakamura always says that he played so many opens growing up and that helps him today in open tournaments. And it sounds like you did the same in Spain. Do you feel like the open tournaments you played when you were on your rise or helping you in open tournaments today? Uh, I, I believe everyone played, uh, almost everyone played opens. Uh, well, it's different, of course, because you, in opens you need to win. And in uh, close tournaments uh, with plus one or plus two, you're already good. Mm. So uh, maybe that's the reason uh, we both have this aggressive style somehow and take risks. <coughs> What's your opinion, uh, Veselin, of Wesley's serve? You, I mean, it looks like he's going to win Tata. I mean, uh. oh, I mean, okay. I just, uh, you know, uh, two years ago when they asked me uh, how how much time I give to Magnus as a world champion, I said around ten years. Yeah. But and in St. Louis, 2015, I think uh, Wesley shared last place, and he couldn't uh, win a single game. And then next, uh, next year he was uh, clear first and now he's, he has did all these fantastic results. Yeah. But I'm, I'm quite happy for him because uh, from one understand also he had a very tough uh, childhood and uh, yeah. it looks like uh, not only he's a talented player but he's also a fighter. You know, he's, uh, he could uh, somehow grow up and uh, so he really... Mm, but it, you know, it... Uh, it's changed so much in two years or even in one year that uh, who knows what will happen in mm. next year. Maybe mm. this new Chinese uh, boy will <coughs> also have this fantastic result or someone right. else. I don't know. Mm. Interesting. But it, uh, again, when I, it didn't look, of course, you see very strong players, but sometimes even wi when I was playing at the beginning against Magnus, of course, you feel that he, he, he will. Uh, he's very strong, but it just went too very quick. Uh, mm. He was uh, suddenly uh, he starts to win everything. You know, yeah. I didn't believe uh, both for Magnus and for Wesley that uh, they will have this result so quickly. Mm. I thought it that would take them maybe a couple more years yeah. than it did. Mm. So in the in the most recent. Um, Candidates tournament. You s after that, you said something to the effect of, "You're not going to be kind of playing in the w for the world championship cycle anymore." I, uh, that's how I heard it. The last round, whatever you said, something to the effect of that. Oh yeah, yeah. no. I, I mean, the, the only the only idea for me w to qualify for the candidates was to have chances to win. I mean, it's not like you go and uh, uh, say, "Okay, 50% would be a good result." It's not a close tournament. It's a close tournament, but but th there's a too big difference between the first and the second place, and f the first and the, r the rest of the places, I would say. So I, I did badly in um, the last two candidates, and again, maybe I somehow realized that uh, even if I qualify, if I could qualify again, it's, it, that it, uh, it's not a big, big deal. I mean, I was c seriously considering not to go to Moscow, actually. So uh, I, my follow-up on that was like, uh, Magnus has also been saying something something to the effect of the current cycle, the way it is organized. He was not happy. He wanted a, it felt like a, a kind of a more rapid like or a more frequent like a yearly 
uh, gold championship type thing. Whereas you are, I think one of your best ever results was in a tournament format where you kind of wiped everybody clean. So there are multiple formats available. I, will um, a different format entice you back into the world championship cycle? Mm. Uh, but I, I mean, I've thought about the, the, the cycles and uh, it's a never ending story. I, I, I don't think <coughs> a, a, the perfect cycle exists because uh, I would say um, a tournament is more spectacular than the match because you have more games. But, um, but the problem of the tournament is this once you start badly, like it happened to me, then you and you go for, for the first place. And, but once you s realize uh, you don't have chances for the first place, then you just lose <coughs> motivation. And for example, I what I like about knockout is that as long as you play, you can be the winner of this knockout. As long as, I mean, if you, as all, everyone who is still playing in mm. the knockout events has the, cha ha has the chance to win it. And in a tournament, it's not the same. And again, match, it's okay. But with one game, I don't think it. Sometimes it's not so spectacular. You know, sometimes the games are boring and it's too technical. You know, they play, especially now, uh, two two openings. Uh, everyone is very solid with black, we, um, as in Carlson Karakin. They were both perfectly prepared with white, with black. I mean, absolutely blocked the the black color, but they couldn't really show big things with the white pieces. So again, I don't find a perfect uh, cycle. Um, so for me, I, again, I like knockout. But if if it if it's a knockout, it has to be every single year. You can't uh, have two years knockout every two years. It has to be ev at the end of the year a knockout. And if you change to match two years, it's okay. Also tournament, I I don't have a problem with that. <coughs> Do you still love chess, Vaseline? Do you still does it still excite you, and you still get passionate about tournaments or uh, games and and you know that uh, fire? You still got that fire for chess? Uh, honestly, not so much because uh, I think the what is happening is that uh, uh, if we were considering that chess was art, science, and uh, sport, now the art is kind of disappearing. So we only have the science and uh, hmm. and sports left. But and especially with seven hours, uh, I I believe it has to be reduced the time control. I th I believe honestly it has to be reduced because the problem of the um, preparation of the sec seven hours. Imagine a situation where you find a good, very interesting novelty or some very interesting idea in the opening, but that is a bit dubious. The problem is that in a, in a, in a rapid game you <coughs> would probably play it because even if your opponent reacts correctly then he would s probably spend too much time and then it's already a time trouble and it's not over. But in a seven, time, seven hour time control, you don't risk. So it's like the same effect as uh, the golden goal in, in football. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, asking you to, to try to, to score, actually uh, this, the uh, classical time control makes you more conservative. <laughs> that's what I don't like, and that is the reason I, I would say that it has to be reduced, even maybe for world championship matches. Mm. Can, can you give us a number what do you think the time control should be? Uh, I would say like hour, hour and a half uh, um, each for the rest of the game, for the whole game. Something like that. And what about people that would say, well, then you can't play end games properly, you don't have enough time left when you get to an ending to... Yeah, <coughs> that is true. But um, the thing about the quality is that uh, quality, just very, very, very little uh, number of people realize what the quality is. So people like time travel. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, and sometimes also the quality is boring. Like, uh, yeah. if you look at the match again, uh, Carlson against Carrick, half of the games, they were made, they were uh, correct games. And the, the reason they were correct games, uh, th they were correct was that uh, more or less it was all prepared. <laughs> mm. So, okay, and uh, again, it's uh, correct, but it, I don't think people liked it. <coughs> and uh, that's, and I believe that uh, if it goes like this, so if we have now the first uh, 15, 20 moves uh, 
already prepared. Uh, in five, ten years, it will be the, the first 30 moves, and then we go on and on. And, so and what about Fisher Random? Are you a fan of that? Uh, not <coughs> really. Uh, the reason, well, uh, I understand, obviously, that uh, it has uh, uh, some idea. But what I don't like is that uh, somehow um, chess is also kind of a culture and it has history. So especially for, pro I, do, I, I believe that professionals, chess players, they would adapt to a Fisher Random. But uh, the ones that will suffer were the chess fans because a chess fan, he, he likes, I imagine, I don't know, uh, go to, to work. And then after that, he, uh, he goes to the chess club and he wants to play the French mm. because he, st he has a book and he studied the French. But now it's not going to, <laughs> <laughs> to happen simply. Uh, so, and of course, I think that all this uh, history about uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, improvement of some lines and the Scheveningen and the Sicilian, it's part of the culture mm. of the of, the, of the, the game of chess. So if you change to Fisher Random, that will disappear. Yes, yeah. Anyone who hasn't asked a question, any final questions, maybe uh, before we wrap up? Yeah. Uh, before he passed away, Mark Dabrowski spoke of a very intense and successful training session he had with you. Uh, can you share some memories of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, actually it was uh, very funny. I, I spent with around two, two weeks with him in Moscow and uh, I thought I was already my rating was 2670 maybe I don't remember uh, not 2700 but then we, with the inflation I was close to top 10 so I thought it was I was quite strong already but especially the first days he showed me some positions I couldn't really uh, fi find any of uh, the solutions uh, so, <laughs> but then I improved. Uh, no, uh, I would say he, he exactly, you know, uh, his, uh, he, he actually considered that the most important thing was to play well. I mean, and opening was not that important. And he's, he, in a way, he's, uh, he's correct that, again, uh, as I said, uh, 90, maybe around 90 or 80, 90 percent of the games are decided by tactical mistakes. I mean, even if you're in a worse position and you start to defend and play well, you s probably still hold it. I mean, but um, uh, if you make uh, uh, statistics, look, uh, I, I'm <coughs> almost certainly sure that uh, that. 80%, 90% are because of tactical mistakes. <coughs> uh, uh, so if you, st if you don't blunder, then you just probably don't lose. And maybe Wesley, uh, he's a good example of that because he's young and he calculates well. He doesn't mm. always find the best move, but uh, he doesn't blunder big things. And that's the reason he has all these results now. Mm. And do you blunder sometimes? <laughs> 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 Last year was, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> two, two full boards <laughs> with all the pieces. Yeah. Mm. Uh, last year for sure, yeah. Mm. Any final questions before we... Um, what about, can I just ask you one question? How, how's your relationship with um, Kramnik these days? I mean, is it would you difficult or doesn't? Uh, well, it's not. Di no, it's not difficult. Simply, we don't speak. You don't speak. Okay. No. Same as. Same as it was before. Right. Yeah. So no change. No change. Any final question for um, Besson before? He's we like wrap up? Uh, Meryl Streep. Uh, overrated. I oh would yeah. say. Overrated. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we should end now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Weston, thank you very much for sharing those fascinating positions and talk about blunders. <laughs> and, uh,